What's up guys, hope you're doing great, it's your boy Kobe Shots. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through my retouching workflow. All right, so what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna do some bit of color grading. I've already selected a preset that I normally use. I've actually shared this over here on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. I'm gonna leave a link down there in the description and also a video of how it works and how you can install it. All right, so let's get right into it once more. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is after I've applied my preset, I'm going to push in a little bit of highlights so that I can bring in these areas, okay? The highlights over here and intensify them. And also I realize that there's a bit of orange in the skin. And so I'm gonna increase the luminance a little bit, okay? So it does affect this part as well right so this area where the light is hidden from behind can also be accentuated okay so the lips particularly is in red okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna increase the saturation in there just a little bit okay i'm gonna zoom out just a little bit more okay i think that works and i'm gonna increase the luminance a little bit to all right to bring it out and make it pop some more i'm pushing the greens as well and luminance so it affects the eye shadow as well as the necklace in here all right and uh, i think that's basically it with the color correction so i basically do all my color gradient color correction here in um, lightroom and i send it to photoshop to finish up with the skin retouching and if i need to further do some more color correcting i can do that in premiere pro so once i leave lightroom i don't return okay <laughs> so let's quickly send this or edit this in adobe photoshop so once it's open in photoshop what i'm gonna do is i am going to start with the blending of the skin all right so i'm gonna go into my actions where I have some actions over here I have um, simple frequency separation that's actually on the internet if you want to download it just go into Google type frequency separation actions and you're gonna have a lot more provided okay so that's about that so I'm gonna hit simple and um, I'm gonna type in because of the size and the camera I use was Canon EOS R it has huge resolution so i'm gonna start with somewhere around 23 i think 23 should do a great job so that doesn't distract the process okay so my frequency separation is created for me so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the mixer brush too which is going to aid me blend the skin all right so let's get into it so you notice that above over here my welcome tablet settings uh, all in 30 and that's one thing that I learned on a YouTube channel so um, I noticed that it really works perfectly when so I let it stay and that's what I've been using ever since okay so I'm gonna carefully and gently make sure that I am blending the highlights the midtones and the shadows okay you notice that I'm not intruding into the highlights from the shadows or vice versa is all subtle um, blending okay right here on the arm and uh, over here on the chin so wherever there's a highlight you make sure that you reduce the brush or increase the brush depending on the size of the shadow or the highlight right so i can carefully blend through just like so okay and this process actually takes not more than 10 minutes depending on the size of uh, the picture you're working on okay zoom out and open up to the picture to edit much more areas All right and i'm blending as i stroke with the pen according to the contours the highlights and the shadows to make sure that it keeps the highlights and shadows in place maintaining the anatomy of the skin and how the body is shaped all right okay so i'm reducing the size of the mixer brush so 
so that fits with the size of the highlights in there. So I'm going to go over this over and over and over again and uh, I ensure that everything is carefully smoothened out. So down here in the armpit, I'm going to blend it some more so it doesn't become too conspicuous, alright? Okay. Just like so. So you can go over it as many times as you want. If you feel like it has to be done well or properly, you do so. Always ensuring that you don't intrude or cross over, otherwise it messes up the anatomy of the face. So highlights should be respected as much as mid-tones and shadows. Okay. So let's see how far we've come so before after before after let me zoom out before and after before and after we've actually come a long way and I think it's basically smoothened out to a degree where we can heal the skin and probably return back to the smoothing or the frequency suppression so over here on the high frequency where my textures are found I'm going to heal the blemishes because it's a beauty portrait, I'm going to have to take my time and clean out all of these. Right in this area where that creases. Sometimes in such spots, um, normally it's better to leave them untouched because uh, that's actually how the face is and um, you like to maintain some kind of um, imperfections in the picture because it leaves it normal and original and natural if I should say okay so I'm not gonna touch this dent at all I'm gonna keep it as is I'm gonna keep on removing these pots and uh, zoom out and see if it's properly done okay it's come a long way let me remove this and over here in the arm. Okay. All right. So let's zoom out and check and see if. All right. Okay. So I've done a whole lot. Let's get back to the frequency suppression and blend in some more. Some of the areas just go over it as many times as we want. Okay. Before I got my welcome tablets, I used to use this process where I use the lasso tool and uh, ensure that my feather is around eight. So you notice that my feather is over there at eight. And I select some areas in the shot and um, use Gaussian blur and blur it out, all right? Using the same radius. And if I wanted to repeat, the effect I hit Ctrl Alt and F to repeat the blurriness in the for further smoothing. Initially, that was actually the whole process I used to use, and though it worked, but it made the face look so unreal. Okay, and that's what we are trying to avoid. So I'm gonna be better off with the pen, but after I'm done with the smoothing with the pen, I still go over it with the old method for some you know further smoothing right so i always select in the area of either highlight or shadow and i don't equally intrude or cross over with a shadow all the way into highlights all right in the center where i normally find the mid-tones select portions across that has a bit of highlight and shadow in there and I blend it and that's basically how I go about it all right so we've actually done a lot and I think yeah I'm actually pleased with where we are all right so after every frequency separation process you notice that it impedes 
the quality of the anatomy of the face. It makes the model's face look a little bit more unreal. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Dodge and Burn to bring out the contours of the face, right? I used the softbox and so the light was kind of soft, but not too soft. It was actually um, a beauty dish in the form of a softbox. So um, I have some shadows in here, much more contoured or deepened out uh, shapes over here. As you see, there are deep shadows here and there. And under that, even though I used a reflector in the shooting process, I still maintain some shadows in there so that you know it can actually bring out the shape of the model as far as the face is concerned. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, curves, and once I hit curves, I'm going to push from the center upwards to create my dodge as far as I can go. All right. And I'm going to invert the mask and equally create another one. This time, bring it down for the dodge. Okay. And um, initially, I would rename this, but because I can easily spot them, I created it myself. Some actions can actually give you all these. So if you are fortunate enough to have actions that can create them for you, the better. But I go ahead to create it myself to, you know, regulate the intensity from the get go. Okay. So with the brush, I'm going to reduce my flow all the way to two so I can have subtle effect or brush strokes and my opacity stays at 100. Okay, so with the curves over here, I think this is highlights. Okay, so with the highlights, I'm gonna with a white brush, I'm gonna brush through, ensuring that the hardness is all the way to zero, soft, and the settings of my brush. Um, over here is as soft as possible. Okay, so you notice the shape dynamics, everything, pen pressure, min minimum diameter is all the way to 100 to ensure that it is very soft. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna brush in the highlight areas with a white. So there's a process we call dodging. Okay. Wherever there's highlights, I'm gonna run over it. Okay. Just like so. Go zoom out and see how far we've come. Okay, coolly. I'm gonna dodge all these areas wherever I can see highlights, especially in the neck area. In the pit of the neck, just like so. Even in the highlights created by the rim light or the back light over here, and also on the hair to so bring out the shape. Because I shot this against a black background with a rim light as well, my model is actually out of the background, even though it's part of the picture. You get it, all right? So. Using rim light and back light are always a must <laughs> anytime I'm taking beauty shots. So, even in the eyeshadow, I'm gonna run through that as well. And I think I'm happy with how far I've come. So, um, I may come back to the dodging, but let's quickly run through the burn where I bring out the shadows that were taken out during the frequency separation process. Okay, so I'm just with subtle strokes. I'm not putting too much pressure on my pen. I'm just bringing out the shape of the face, like so. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into the dodge. So I found some more highlights in here. I need to even bring it out much more. All right. And the nose, just like so. Let's zoom in all the way and run through this as well. And the way that the makeup artist applied under the eye. Okay. So I'm also dodging the reflection from the reflector. 
in the pupil just to make it pop some more all right so let's check before and after and see how far i've come before after before after okay we've done a great deal of work so far <laughs> which i'm very impressed with all right let's keep on dodging then we come back to the burn okay like so i'm gonna zoom out like that all right so before and after before after before after okay let me dodge the arm a little bit more I zoom out all the way see and i think i'm pretty much satisfied with what i've done so far so let's get back to the healing process and take out much more blemishes i think i've seen some creases in here over here as well All these areas should be fixed. Okay. All the way on top of the forehead. And yeah, I think we are done. So thank you very much for watching this video to the very end. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the post notification button so that you always be notified every time I upload a new video over here on my YouTube channel. And until the next video, I'm gonna catch you later. Have a wonderful day. See ya.